Hi, I'm Andy Dorsch. This is my second video on the Ron's Trains and Things Down and Dirty Weathering Contest. And I'm going to show you how we take a brand new Scaletrains.com boxcar and turn it into something that looks like it's been running around in the real world for years. After the dull coat on my model dried, my next step was to apply a fade. My fade solution is 10% flat white paint and 90% thinner. Since this is an acrylic paint, my thinner is water. As you can see, I just go back and forth until I get the desired fade. As that fade is drying on the boxcar, I go ahead here and start uh, painting up my side frames. For the Burnt Sienna, uh, it's an oil-based paint. What I do here is I just kind of smatter. All I want to do is get a base color for the side frames so that I can apply my pastels and pigments. Now that the side frames have some oil on them, I go ahead and apply some pan pastel. It does it give some dusty texture, but it also gives me the desired color. Do the same thing here with the pan pastels and the wheel sets, just to really get a nice coat of rust on there. Once the fade is dried, I use Bragdon weathering powders to apply the first coats of grime and rust. As you can see here, it goes pretty quick. Now that my original grime is applied using the weathering powders, I come back with oil base paint here and start the streaking process. So here I put some oil base paint on here with a toothpick and then I dip my brush in turpentine or mineral spirits or paint thinner and go ahead and start pulling down. When you do streaking, you have to make sure that you do straight up and down strokes because streaks don't go sideways. Here we're going to put paint directly onto the model using the brush and you're going to say to yourself, oh my god, my model's ruined. Well, don't fear, because you can always use paint thinner and dab your brush off, and you can pull back that paint, and you can actually save your model. As you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and just see this, the big streak is starting to fade away, and you just go ahead and keep pulling down and keep feathering it out. Now it doesn't look like there was a big messy blob there at all, now does it? Doesn't look too bad after all is said and done. Kinda like that effect. Remember, if you take too much, you put too much on, using thinner, you can always pull it off. So don't be afraid to go bold right off the bat. I'm gonna repeat the process here because it went a little too thin. Just gonna go ahead and add a little more and then very lightly pull it off. Actually, I'm still not happy with it, so I'm gonna go back in, blast some more brown on here, some rust, and try and get a more intense color.
spinner. Let's just put off real gently. I'm going to use my left hand here. There we go. It's starting to be a little more dramatic now. I think the key with weathering is, is that you don't have to get it all in one shot. If you apply many layers, kind of get, kind of ease into it, you'll oftentimes get the result you're looking for. Just a little finishing dab there. That should probably do it. Perfect. All right, now that the streaking is done on the side panels, we're gonna take a sponge here and some oil-based paint. And we're just gonna go ahead and dab that rust streaking to kind of start weathering the roof now. So these cars, um, 70s were fairly new. So they're not gonna be just caked with rust, but they are gonna have a little light coating of it. Uh, primarily on the ribs and the ridges, things that would be ex kind of rusting out first on these cars. So I go through and basically dab rust colored paint along the ridge of the car roof here. As you can see, it's a very subtle but subtle effect. Here we're going to put the finishing tucks. I'm using my Bragdon weathering powders again and going in with some iron oxide. Really starting to highlight the rustiness of the, of the side frames. Really giving it that impression that these have been used and maintained infrequently. And the last part of my process here is to go ahead and do the car ends. Again, I'm using the Bragdon weathering powders. I feel they get great results with just a little bit of subtle coloring. So as you can see, I'm simulating the grime and the dirt um, that's baked on the ends of the car. I'm also going over the draft gear and the brake rigging as well that rusty, grimy, dirty color. So this is what it looks like after all is said and done. So those are my techniques on how I weather up a scale trains box car. If you have any comments or questions or want to leave how you would go ahead and weather this box car, please put them in the comment section below of this video. Also, if this is your first time here, please subscribe to my channel and you'll see tons more videos about model railroading. Lastly, I want to thank Ron's Trains and Things, Eric at IMRRO.com and Midwest Model Railroad for their sponsorship in this contest. So that's going to do it for me today. And until next time, keep her a notch eight.